Hi, I'm Realtor Bert Tade, and welcome to another educational video in a series I like to call Sipping Coffee or Tea with Realtor Bert Tade. Uh, this is an educational video series about the real estate industry where we uh, maneuver through the hype, the hoopla, and yeah, even the media negativity surrounding uh, our industry. And uh, today's topic is going to be uh, video number four of a four part series that uh, we're talk in which we're talking about uh, uh, market trends, right? So the first video uh, was uh, uh, current market uh, 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 conditions and trends. The second one, analyzing local market data, uh, and where we talked about San Antonio uh, information specifically. If you didn't catch that video, be sure to uh, uh, whatever platform you're watching on go back and watch that video is pretty I think that was perhaps uh, one of the more interesting ones I've done in a while and then uh, the third one is forecasting future market trends and today's topic is going to be uh, impact of economic factors on real estate uh, so again a, a very general yet very informative uh, resource to you so hopefully it's going to be of service to you uh, I'm Bert Tade I'm broker owner of Santino Properties LLC I want to get that out right away. Uh, I am not uh, offering a pitch of any kind. This is instead to, uh, meant to be uh, a good resource uh, for uh, the public uh, that might be contemplating a purchase either now or sometime in the future. Uh, there are a lot of people on the sidelines right now. So hopefully this four part series has been interesting for you in uh, determining whether or not uh, now is gonna be a good time for you. We Again, we talked a lot about the data in San Antonio in particular uh, in video number two and let's get into video number four which is, again is impact of economic factors on real estate so the first point I'd like to make are employment and income levels right uh, we can see that higher employment and income uh, higher income levels uh, are obviously going to generate uh, increased demand uh, for housing as well as how many people can afford homes right so we're looking at uh, the uh, general uh, health, good health of, of a, uh, an economic um, condition of a marketplace where you're going to see a lot more competition because a lot more people can jump into the marketplace, right? Conversely speaking, when there's an economic downturn uh, and job losses, this can reduce demand and of course, you know, lead to uh, market slowdowns. Now, we talked about in video two, there is a, a considerable market slowdown, although it's not related to uh, job losses, for example, because we talked about that in uh, number two as well. The fact that the unemployment rate is so strong here in San Antonio, uh, I think we said 3.2% uh, unemployment. That means that 96.8% of the population uh, that, that wants to work is, in, is gainfully employed. So that is not an issue in terms of job losses. Uh, GDP, we talked about that in the last video, number three. Uh, that is also very, very strong uh, here in San Antonio. Uh, the um, $121 billion, I think we said, in 2018. So it's a very strong economy. It, it is, it's fueled by the military and, and the healthcare industry and tourism, right? Just to name a few. Uh, so it's not that San Antonio is, is in dire straits in terms of economics but instead because of, of a very high interest rate environment, right? Uh, so number two is inflation. Uh, that's another impa uh, impact of economic factors. Inflation, of course, is, it's been affecting all of us, right? And it can also affect real estate in various ways, including increasing construction costs, uh, which may lead to higher home prices. Why? Because materials went up in, val it went up in price, right? And we did see that, of course, uh, you know, during the pandemic years because of supply chain issues, right? A whole other uh, set of, of challenges that we faced. Uh, I uh, owned at that time um, rental property, right? Uh, apartments. And I was, uh, you know, buying a number of, of new appliances uh, for those units uh, to rent them out. And my goodness, I mean, if you, you know, you can order them on any website, any single one, Lowe's, dot com and best buy didn't matter and order it and then pack a lunch <laughs> because you were waiting for like months so and again it's due to the supply chain issues in fact i even bought a vehicle don't even get me get me started with that they discounted the 
blind spot sensors and didn't install them in my vehicle because there was a chip shortage again due to supply chain issues right it was the 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 explanation that they gave excuse frankly All right but anyway so inflation has been an issue for us uh here uh, recently uh and uh that's a whole other video another topic to talk about you know the reasons for inflation that we've seen and uh and a lot of it is because of the um uh because of the printing of money right um it was uh, uh somewhat out of control in the last two uh, uh regimes right here in the united states right and um uh, so that was an issue uh, and also has created that high inflation and they, they thought it was going to be transitory uh, and for years they were saying no it's just transitory but uh, uh, but because of that quantitative easing that we did see uh, a, a, a prices go through the roof so uh, again another topic I'm not an economist I'm a real estate broker <laughs> so I'll stay in my lane but it, it can also uh, of course inflation can impact interest rates right as central banks may raise rates to control inflation affecting mortgage affordability. And we talked about that also, uh, I believe in the last video, we talked about uh, how the Fed, the FOMC, uh, Federal Open Market Committee, it's meeting again here in July of 2024, I believe it's the 11th, I wanna say, is when they start their meetings and then and the, the big thing, everybody seems to be holding their breath. Are they gonna finally lower interest rates? Are they going to raise them? And we all know that it's the overnight funds rate that they raise and lower. Uh, to uh, tamp down uh, demand and increase demand and they kind of uh, tinker with with the um, uh, the economy that way uh, based on data economic data and we have been waiting I guess well I haven't been waiting but some people have been waiting on the sidelines to see whether or not they would lower uh, interest rates because the mortgage interest rate as I just mentioned is tied in uh, to the 10-year Treasury and of course you know the the overnight funds rate in um uh indirectly so are they going to lower rates well inflation's not under control yet so instead of the two or three interest rate reductions that supposedly we were supposed to see in uh in in 2024 instead conversely speaking i've heard of maybe even by september them raising rates right again so uh this is the new uh interest rate environment like it or not uh, so uh, challenging uh, as it may be, um, m my suggestion for the last year and a half has been uh, to date the rate and marry the house. And, and people don't like that you know, point of view. I've gotten a lot of feedback on that, that you're entitled to your opinion. I, I just think that there's got to be, I know it sounds like a slogan, but it's got to be a, a, a way for us to get past this and just accept it as frankly a new norm which is still below the historic rates. I think I did a, I've done videos talking about the historical averages on the 30 year fixed rate going back to 1971 when uh, Fannie Mae first uh, started to track those rates. And over the past, you know, 53 years, 7.76%, that's the average. So if, if rates got as high as, you know, 7.1%, you know, just here in the last couple months, uh, it's still below historic averages, frankly. So it's not the end of the world. Maybe some people will, will see it as an opportunity because of the slowdown to go and negotiate a better um, rate with, with uh, competent professionals like myself um, and like the other thousands of realtors that are in this town uh, because these, these uh, homes that are on the market now, there's a plethora of them and they need buyers. They need good, strong buyers like yourself. So if you can afford, you can uh, get qualified in this current interest rate environment now's the time to at least consider it and hopefully these videos have been helpful for you to, to make that that a uh, buying decision as well so government policies is number three uh, tax incentives subsidies housing programs uh, can stimulate the real estate market by making home ownership more accessible uh, for years and years and years uh, going back almost 10 uh, that I've been in the, in the real estate business um, has been you know the uh, uh, Texas uh, programs whereby some are, are, are loans in second lien positions, uh, but they could be, they could turn into grants if you stay in the house X amount of years, um, you know, through TSHAC, uh, Texas State Housing Corporation, I think I want to say something like that. Uh, just reach out to me, I'll get you more information about that. Uh, just text me or DM me or something. 
I'd be happy to get you more information on uh, T Shack as one of the programs that will help first time home buyers uh, uh, with the affordability factor. And those are the government policies that we're talking about here at the state level. At one time, uh, San Antonio, City of San Antonio was offering some incentives as well. Uh, but I have a client who's, uh, who's actually a, uh, an employee of the city and told me right around the time that he bought, those funds ran out. Um, so, um, con uh, conversely speaking, about uh, talking about government policies, uh, regulatory changes and increased property taxes can impact affordability and investor sentiment. Well, as it relates for, to investors, sure, because nothing has changed. However, remember the videos that I've made about November of last year when we as Texans went to, to the, 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 the polls, right? That we went to the voter booths to decide whether or not to approve a tax uh, reprieve for ourselves. That's right. Finally, right? For years and years and years, from the beginning of time, or the beginning of this, na this great nation of ours, uh, politicians have put in incentives for themselves, right? Well, this was a referendum on high taxes in Texas, on property taxes. And it gave us the opportunity to decide for ourselves in our state whether or not we wanted to give ourselves a little bit of a tax break. And overwhelmingly, we said yes. I think it was like, you know, 78 point something to 21 point something percent or something. Who voted for, for, for that to keep the taxes the same? That's what I want to know. Anyway, for years and years and years, my clients would, would complain to me. They bought houses with me. They would, would just vent, I guess, to me. Uh, you know, when the tax bills would come out in April. And it was, it's been like that every year except uh, 2020, obviously, when the pandemic hit. And then those came out, I think, in May or June. They were delayed a little bit um, because of the pandemic, the, 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 start, the, the start of the pandemic. Uh, but they come out every April. And invariably, people would call me and say, hey, Bert, you know, my gosh, why? You know, why are my taxes going up so much? I can't believe this. Well, I told them, I've told them for years and years and years, my clients, that the only way that we could uh, see a change in that high uh, property tax rate environment in Texas is if they addressed it at the legislature level. So good luck, you know, protesting your taxes. I try to every year anyway. Uh, however, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an uphill battle. It really is. And um, now investors, uh, again, as I mentioned in the, in the uh, proposed the last uh, point I just made, they're not going to see a lot of uh, of a benefit. However, homeowners, right, those that own their homestead, because it's in the Texas Constitution homestead, um, that we have a right to ho uh, home ownership in Texas, and the homeowners, primary homeowners, that you can only claim one homestead exemption, but where you lay your head every night, where you call your house, your home, um, you have now... Uh, thanks to the the results of last year's election in November, um, a uh, a little bit of a of a um, uh, of a softening of those tax high taxes, right? So, for me, for example, where I live in Bear County, it was two point six two percent, and now I think it's two point two nine something percent, and or two point two yeah two point two nine six or something like that. I don't know something like that, and the reason why is because. Uh, the state of Texas had a surplus in the budget of two point something billion dollars and um, and they, they put it to the voters. Hey, do you think we should use some of this money to help uh, 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 curb some of those tax property tax rate increases uh, to homeowners across the state? Uh, and 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 we overwhelmingly said yes, as I mentioned, and that's because of the fact that we were able to now uh, allocate some of those resources some of those two billion dollars to addressing um, uh, schools the the high uh, price of schools right and it used to really uh, upset some of my clients that no longer have children and I think well you know uh, but you want to live in a place that's got good schools because it helps to uh, for your home appreciation and eventually you're going to take that benefit uh, when you do sell eventually so it's good to be in a, in a tax in, a, in, a, in an area where the taxes, uh, not that they're higher, but they're they they have they're serviced by good schools. Um, they're like, well, yeah, but I don't have kids, and I just, it's part of the deal. So 
they lowered our taxes in a little bit in the sense that the, more of that the taxes they were uh, collecting on property taxes uh, for schools is now going to come out of the surplus budget surplus right so um, for number four is consumer confidence high consumer confidence typically celebrates uh, correlates uh, with increasing uh, home buying activity as people may feel more secure in their financial situation so consumer confidence right I mean it's we talked about that in another video, right? It's a very important, as well as low confidence, uh, on the other hand, can lead to uh, reduced spending and a more cautious approach to purchasing property. So, you know, uh, consumer confidence, you know, it's it's tough to find in today's environment, inflationary de environment. And you'll find that there's going to be, um, again, uh, a lot of uncertainty, right? Because uh, inflation is, has, has been so high and because uh, the interest rates have been as high as they have been. Well, it affects obviously affects consumer confidence, how much you can afford, right? Because if the rates were, you know, artificially kept low at you know three and a half, four percent, you know, before, then now if they're six and a half, seven percent, well, you can afford less house because your monthly payment. Everything in this country seems to be a monthly payment, right? What is my monthly payment? Now. One side note again, this is not a pitch for, uh, for us necessarily. I just want to tell you that, that there is another way. And if you are uh, watching the video up to this point, then and you're thinking about buying, I can tell you how we are helping our clients uh, to find homes with lower interest rates. That's right. Those days are gone, but not necessarily gone. Reach out to me for more information on that. You know, again, this is not a pitch for our brokerage, but at the same time, we are, help, we are helping uh, consumers find lower interest rates even in this environment. It's a really uh, interesting uh, program that we have going and nobody's doing that I'm aware of anyway. Reach out to me if you have any questions about that. Uh, number five uh, and the last one is global economic events. International economic events and geopolitical events can of course influence real estate markets, especially in cities with significant foreign investment. That's pretty obvious, right? And, you know, yeah, you know, we're, there's the war in Ukraine and Russia and, okay, well, okay, so then how does that inf impact our markets? Well, it has to do with, with uh, going back to consumer confidence, investor activity. Uh, if they think that something is going to, to break out in terms of, of a full-scale war, that can also affect people's uh, confidence in the markets as well. Uh, so... You know, global economic downturns, you know, yeah, they can can reduce investment in real estate uh, where uh, while favorable international trade conditions can boost market activity. And that's, of course, you know, uh, again, a very um, obvious factor, particularly when we're looking at uh, foreign investment uh, in in our markets, especially if they're countries that have been impacted by war or strife, economic downturns, etc. Right. Uh, but that's for another subject, another topic, another video. Uh, and again, I want to stay in my lane. Let me just say that, that report these two, these five to you in terms of economic factors on real estate. So this has been uh, Sipping Coffee or Tea with Realtor Bert Tade. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you're not already subscribed so you can uh, be alerted whenever a new video comes out, that might be of interest to you. And be sure to also leave me a comment below I like to know uh, some of the topics that we choose uh, here uh, for our videos in our series, um, this educational video se series about real estate. If they're interesting to you, if you'd like to see anything in particular, leave me a comment below. I'd love to talk about whatever you would like for me to talk about and be a resource to you that way, right? So hopefully this has been of service to you and you've enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, thank you for watching my video on Bert Tide. Broker owner of Santino Properties LLC. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.